Guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be looking at the beast, the rifle you see in front of me. I'm super pumped on this build. I'm gonna take you through the details, what sort of my use case for it is, all the different components. It's gonna be a fun one. Let's hit it. So first things first, let's start with the why. Why do you need a gigantic rifle with a straight taper barrel shooting a 220 grain projectile at 3,200 feet per second? Well, the first reason is you can, okay? <laughs> but in my case, the why is there are certain matches, styles of matches like long range matches, prone matches, where a bigger bullet going very fast is an advantage, okay? Or at least puts you on a level playing field with the rest. Now, while I've won one of these matches with a 6.5 Creedmoor way back in the day, Skulk actually carried the team with this 338 that day, but I'm claiming the Creedmoor, it does put you sort of on the back foot, even if it's to the point where if you're missing with a 140 grain bullet at 2,800 feet per second at the muzzle, by the time it lands at 1,400 yards, you seldomly see any dust kick up or something. So bigger bullet in that case scenario is a gigantic advantage. Anyway, let me take you guys through the build. So at the moment, we're in an MDT LSS Gen 2 chassis. Now I've named this rifle the Black Beast, okay? <laughs> if it was a UFC fighter, we could have just called it Derek Lewis. Okay, the reason I've gone for Black Beast is I've kind of got this vision in my mind as to where this project goes. Now, usually I give my rifles girl names like Sam or Bella, like some of my other rifles. But this one, we're gonna go with the Black Beast. I'm tempted to possibly make the barrel black. Okay, so let's start from the back. LSS Gen 2, that's probably not gonna be its permanent sort of dress that it wears. It's not gonna be the permanent home. I'm probably gonna end up switching it to an MDT ACC and then just add like all the weights in the world. Because once again, when you're shooting long range matches, the less recoil you have, the better that's gonna help you pick up bullet trace, put a round on target quicker if you need to do follow-up shots. Generally in the case with these kind of matches, you do have quite a bit of time to shoot your second round. And Skulk and I actually laugh always because we're done shooting in like half the amount of time allocated per team to do these events. Anyway, so big 30 cal, this rifle is chambered in 30 Sherman Magnum or 30 SM for short. Okay, so you're basically, if you think about this case design, right? It's a 300 PRC, okay? with a 40 degree shoulder. That's basically what we have here. So you can actually shoot factory 300 PRC in this guy. Now, a whole bunch of you guys, by the way, this is a dummy round. A whole bunch of you guys ask me, Pete, what is your opinion on the 300 PRC? I think it's an awesome caliber. I think it's an awesome, well, it's an awesome cartridge to be technically correct. I think it's a very versatile cartridge, a big 30 cal, you can drop anything. And basically it's the modern day, I'm probably gonna get freaking nailed for this comment but it's the modern day sort of version of the 300 Win Mag. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with the 300 Win Mag. In fact, if you have a rifle with the right twist and the right barrel length, you can do a lot with the 300 Win Mag. And I've seen some guys winning these long range matches that we go to with like a 300 Win Mag. And that caliber is a little bit dated considering all the sort of latest advancements in bullets and Sami specs. And that's kind of the, the thing that this sort of 300 Win mag has been limited by in the past is in the past the Sami spec would have that bullet pushed into the powder column so deep whereas if you have a custom 300 win mag perhaps you could seed your bullet out a little bit longer gain quite a bit of powder volume and then you can do a lot with the 300 win mag so there are still some pluses to the 300 win mag now this is all built on a bat HR action, the long action. One thing that I possibly have to look into doing is possibly bed the first little section of this barrel. Because what you have to keep in mind is even if your action is ridiculously stiff, if you hang a 29 inch straight taper barrel on any action, it's gonna pull on the front of the action and I'm exaggerating this, but an action can bow on you, okay? Because of all the weight basically hanging on those two action screws which are located here. So that's something I'll have to play with. I've asked Bruce from Bat if he thinks it's necessary in this case, but we'll see sort of how we go with the first test firing. So I'm actually gonna head out to the range in this week, go break in the barrel. I have cleaned everything out, everything is set up. All I have to do is tighten up the Raptor there at the front, but for the most part, everything is ready with the build. So we've spoken about the stock or the chassis in this case. Stock, old school sort of 
wood, laminate, carbon fiber, you name it, chassis, modern, super practical, you can add stuff and take stuff off. So obviously <laughs> not a hunting rifle this. <laughs> I think that was pretty obvious. It would be a stupid hunting caliber. If you put this on like a carbon fiber barrel in a lightweight build and something I'm tempted to do, but it would just be too close to one of the other rifles I already own. This thing will be an incredible hunting rifle. Okay, so bad HR action, 20 MOA rail obviously milled into the action. And what I really like about the integrated 20 MOA rails is that it's one less thing that can come loose. You know, the other day I was shooting a match in Johannesburg area and one of my friends, Ruan, in fact, I'm wearing his shirt today. He is a phenomenal shooter and he ended up having a really bad performance at the match because his scope rail was loose. So something so silly and that just mitigates sort of that. The HR Action also has a built-in recoil lug. Then the barrel we've spoken about finished at 29 inches, international barrels, straight taper. These guys are out of Canada. Fun fact, if you didn't know, the guys who started MDT now run international barrels. Super helpful bunch of guys. We've got one of our Raptors on the front, a monster version, so it's a little bit bigger, tame the sort of incredible power that's gonna come from this guy. Now my plan with these is to shoot the 220 grand long range hybrid targets. Now to give you some numbers here, I plan on shooting them at about 3,100 feet per second. You could probably shoot them a little bit hotter. I'm gonna shoot Retumbo if that helps anyone. We've got a G7 BC or a G1 BC, excuse me. I don't even know why they bother printing the G1 BC of 0.717 and I'm not sure off the top of my head what the G7 is, but I'm gonna have that here because I have set up a ballistic profile. Now, 2,000 meters with the 220 grain projectile at 3,100 feet per second, it's 6.9 moles. Okay, so maybe compare that to what your rifle does if you've got a 6.5 Creedmoor. And again, I'm for the guys in the States that don't know what the hell a meter is, I'm gonna have that distance here for you because uh, I don't know why you guys do that, but anyway, it is what it is. Um, Running an Arca rail on the front here, one of our Arca rails from APW, and then I've got a Skypod. Now here's something where we're gonna make a change. At the moment, I've got the Skypod on here just to show you guys sort of the build, right? But I was saying to Skulk, like, you know, we go to these matches and you see the kit that the guys are running. You know, they've all got fancy brackets with the magneto speed, so they've got the muzzle velocity on every round. So if, for example, they're shooting at 1400 yards, I don't know why I said feet just now, but anyway, 1400 yards, and you hit low, instead of making a correction based on, you know, oh, my dope's off, I'll add like three more clicks. They look at the chronograph dot and they see, you know, that round was 50 feet per second slower than the one before. So I'm gonna shoot the same shot and hopefully that sort of falls back into my averages and hit on the second shot. So we don't do that. We kind of just, and that's our own fault and that's sort of our, our mindset that we always had. We just go there, have fun, wing it, and then whatever happens, happens. And we've done well with that philosophy, but we're not, super consistent, so we need to change that. So then Skalk and I were chatting and saying, listen, these guys are running these gigantic bipods, you know? The Skypod's not a small bipod, this thing is ridiculously heavy, but we're gonna be making a change and going to sort of a bipod like this. Now, this is sort of a model of, I don't know, there's a company making Phoenix bipods, I'm not familiar with the sort of these fancy things, although you could consider the Skypod super fancy. But basically these bipods are gonna allow us to get even more steady. I'm also gonna change up my rear bag because at the moment we've kind of been shooting just, you know, a game changer at the back. And while Robert Brantley won King of Two Mile, I believe shooting a game changer, it's not as steady as sort of one of the fancier bags. So we're changing up our kits a little bit. We're probably gonna make a once-off part that we can just clamp this directly onto the Arcarel. You know, I'm gonna even she put this in an ACC. So that's gonna be a little bit easier. This is still like a Picatinny mount. But with this guy, what's cool is you can adjust your elevation on your bipod to precisely where you need it, which is really cool, sir. So as you'll see, as I turn the knob, we're gaining some elevation. Now that does take a little bit more time and things to get set up on the target. Probably gonna have to alter the shooting technique a little bit in terms of, you know, loading your bipod, because you won't be able to do it like that by the nature of the sort of skid feet that we have on here. And I've also noticed the guys even taking like their little piece of artificial grass so that it can glide straight back to them. So I'm gonna probably become one of those guys. <laughs> And then on the top, we've got the MDT one-piece mount with a Razor 3 to 18. Again, the scope will probably not live on this build, but for now, for me to do initial load development, break the rifle in, get some dope for the rifle, this scope is gonna be just fine. 
Trigger Tech Diamond 2 stage, as always, I run all my Trigger Techs at the same weight. I've got a nice digital trigger pull gate, which is quite a nice investment. It wasn't that expensive, but it's really cool if you have multiple rifles to run the same trigger, just so you know whether you're hunting or you're shooting a precision rifle match or a long range match. For me, I've gone back to the two stages, which means I've got a little bit of take up and then the shot will actually break after that. So I've really loved switching to the Trigger Tech 2 stages and they're working great for me. Other than that, that's kind of the build for now. I'm excited to take this puppy out, do some shooting. I'm gonna bring you guys along for that. I've hinted about it in the past, but I actually don't have access to my shooting range where we did all of our videos. And that's why we've been doing more studio videos lately. I've, obviously I've moved and it's Rona and it's winter here and everything, but that's a big reason why we haven't gone out shooting that much because I don't have a spot to shoot. But we've got some stuff in the works and I'm really excited. It's a new challenge. And I'm excited to stretch the legs on this guy. I think we've got about three weeks to get everything settled, get data, get dope, zero, break in the barrel, low development. I have found with custom rifles like this one, very little load development needed. It kind of shoots whatever you put in it. So that should be an easy part. And then we're gonna head out and shoot a match and I'll take you guys along. Last time we went, I didn't film the match because I felt like, you know, I just wanted to go out and shoot without seven cameras and all of those things and remembering what I said and documenting the whole day. While it's fun to bring you guys along, sometimes I just wanna go out and shoot a match just like you do and enjoy that without sort of working while I'm shooting the match. But I'm sure you guys will understand that. I've also seen some comments like, Pete, the Shermans, are you happy with them? Dude, I'm absolutely blown away by my Shermans. So I've got, the 6.5 Sherman, I've got two 7mm Shermans, and then I've got the 30 cal Sherman, and I'm probably gonna build more Shermans in the future. If you wanna check out sort of the Sherman Wildcat cartridges, they've got a Facebook group. I'm gonna pin a comment below the video with the Facebook group. Join us there, there are some guys sharing some incredible information with their Sherman builds. One thing to warn you about, if you're gonna get into sort of what is considered the Wildcat cartridges, it's not so easy to look up low data and stuff like that, but Rich from Sherman is incredibly helpful, as are the members in the group. You know, you ask a question, I've got this powder, I've got this bullet, will it work? And the guys are really helpful with getting you a starting point. And I just wanna thank everybody in that group for helping me, because I've been one of the annoying people asking questions the whole time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you didn't, please leave a dislike, because that also helps, you know, the algorithm. Some of my regular commenters, I haven't seen you guys lately, so make sure you leave me a comment, tell me if you're still alive, hopefully Rona didn't take you guys out. Um, you will also know that I recently went through Rona, and yeah, it sucked, it was pretty bad. I'm not gonna get into a political discussion whether to get vaccinated or not, but we will be able to travel soon to the United States, which is basically where I've been wanting to go for a while, because I've got so many cool collaborations with my friend Gavin from Ultimate Reloader, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff we've got planned and it looks like we're gonna be able to travel from round about November, so yay! Anyway guys, stay safe, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're into long range shooting, please share these videos with your friends. It really does help out the channel a lot. We just hit 100,000 subscribers not too long ago. Actually yesterday we hit 108,000 subscribers. So I'm super pumped, we're heading to a million to double the channel again to 200,000 just seemed too easy. So we're going for a million. Guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. God bless every single one of you. And thank you to our awesome sponsor, MDT, for making these videos possible. Head on over to mdttech.com. They've got a brand new website. You can shop all the chassis. And if you're in South Africa and you wanna purchase an MDT product, you can also get those from me. Shameless plug, website details down below. Bye.